we're going to hit some do's and don'ts because now we're getting to the real meat and potatoes, right? Like you show up down at Joint Base San Antonio, beautiful San Antonio, Texas, uh, down at Lackland Air Force Base is what it used to be called. But as you're down there at JBSA, you're going to go to BMT. Listen, again, because everybody wants to know everything about everything, the word has gotten out that BMT, Air Force BMT, is not the most physically demanding thing. Shocker. <laughs> It's been like that since forever, right? It's not the Marines' 13-week crucible. It's not the Army's course. It's uh, the Marines' 16 weeks. It's not the Army's 13-week course, right? Okay, we get it. Do not go into that course and think, oh, this is dumb. I'm just here to kill time until I can go on. Like, that's your time to make. You're going to be in your own flight of aspect war airmen. You're going to have the chance to start making those connections. And, oh, by the way, you're going to have a chance to really start on your journey, Right. So Ivan Ruiz said it perfectly, like when he was talking about transitioning out, but it, it plays here. He said, you don't have a job and on the back end of the military until you get a, your first paycheck from that job. Okay, well, there's no way that you can be a PJ or be a combat controller or be a TAC P airman or be a, you know, a, a special reconnaissance man. There's no way that you can do that until you hit day one of BMT. So don't go into that thing with anything other than a real desire to learn about the Air Force. Your, your checks are not signed by Air Force Special Tactics. Your checks are not signed by ACC Rescue Unit. Your checks are signed by the United States Air Force and the Department of Defense. And you're expected to be a good airman. So don't think you're going to go in there and just be like, oh, dog. I mean, I'm going to be working with the Army anyway because I'm going to be attack P airmen. So there's no reason to learn about this dumb Air Force stuff. That's, that's not the right attitude to have. And by the way, the MTIs do not care. The, MTI, the MTIs know what the attrition rate is. And uh, if you think that they're just going to let you be like, oh, yeah, no, you guys do whatever you want. You guys are a little bit different. <laughs> no, that's not how it's going to go, dog. I mean, nine out of every 10 people are just going to end up in the Air Force anyway with the MTIs. I, I was just going to say that, Sorry. That, that that was a great conversation. It was either a conversation or, or text like with, on the Discord channel with the guys that were about to ship. It's like, hey, just so you know. All these great human beings that you're talking to, you know, that you guys have been building each other up and that you've been, you know, helping mentor each other and holding each other accountable. Most of you will not make it. Mm -hmm. And it was like a, they, they, which is good that they had never considered it because they're like, no, I'm, I'm making it. Like, sure. there's no doubt in my mind. That's great. But to set expectations and not to be an asshole about it, but in reality, most of you are not going to make it. In, in a moment of weakness or, or whatever it is, you're going to ring the bell. And that's, it doesn't make you lesser. It doesn't make you anything like that. It's just expectation management. Most of you aren't going to make it. Well, I would say going into to BMT specifically, if you're trying to increase your chances, I know we say it's not difficult all the time, like it's BMT, right? But I think we should change our tune a little bit and just start saying it's going to be hard. You know, because like, what if what if everybody says it's not difficult, and you show up, and for so one reason or another, something about BMT just really stresses you out and makes oh, yeah. it really hard. But if you go in there with the mindset that it's going to be difficult, and if you're kind of coasting a little bit, and you seek out additional things to learn or additional responsibilities and make it difficult on yourself, and and keep in that grind state, I think it 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 will you know, stand uh, lead to more success when once you leave there. If you go there and all you do is try to coast through and disappear and and have a bad attitude about it. Like your attitude is momentum and changing yep. that momentum. Once you get over to, to SWIC and ANS is, is a lot more difficult than you might think it is. Yeah. And I say it all the time. Excellence is a habit. So I expect you to go there. I, Trent has never said that. I've always said it. So, but if <laughs> I, I love that, that optic trend, like if you show up to BMT, like, okay, we're saying it's not, it's not going to be hard. It's going to be frustrating or, or whatever it is that, you know, we, we had been saying, how about you show up and you take a leadership position? How about you're a dorm chief? How about you take on a, a squad chief position, whatever they're calling the, was it element leader? Yeah, element leader position. Uh, dorm chief, you take on one of those leadership positions. You shoot expert when you go there. How about you go and you, you try to get the honor grad? How about you try to get honor flight? Like, how about that? I would feel way better as opposed to just going somewhere and just being like, well, I'm just counting the minutes and doing the bare minimum until I got to go do the hardest thing I've ever tried to do in my life. Momentum is a great way to put it. How about I show up over to the, to the Chapman training annex with an extra ribbon on? How about I show up with some extra leadership experience behind me with a whole group of people that we're ready to go actually crush this next thing? So don't sleep on BMT for whatever it is and whatever it isn't. It's an opportunity to excel.
and you're supposed to go and crush that thing. But I will say, if you do end up volunteering for one of those positions, it better not be because you want to have power over somebody or you want to act like an, if you want to act like an asshole, somebody, you are not better than anybody else in there. I just got to caveat that because I have, because I have seen power. Yeah. (laughs) Trent's like, no, consolidate power, (laughs) (laughs) organize a resistance. (laughs) They will fail without you. You better take control. The the airman's resistance movement. (laughs) I love it. Strong. We got to come up with one for strong, strong arm. (laughs) Um, So some other don'ts of BMT, like, man, do stay focused. Don't, you're going to have a little bit of time. You're going to be able to like walk over to the BX. You're going to start interacting with people. (laughs) Don't be a douche. Whoever you're talking to, you haven't even hit step one yet. Like don't, we have all had a million conversations, like regular active duty folks are over there. And every once in a while, somebody will engage you and be like, oh, hey, what's up there? Slick sleeve. How are you doing? You're like, uh, I'm here to drop bombs on people and kill people and be awesome. Like, OK, are you turbo? You're three weeks into it. It's the first time you were allowed to march over to the Smoothie King and get yourself something that wasn't like a piece of bread. Like, you're not really that cool. I don't think hey, they're awake. <laughs> Otherwise, oh yeah, I'm, neither are we, right? Yeah. yeah Who, so. And by the way, whoever's engaging you to talk to BMT students probably isn't that cool either. But that's more of a judgment <laughs> on my end. <laughs> no, I, I actually had a conversation with one of those uh, BMTers the other day. I was over my, at my comment stands. Reed Medical Clinic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like, what? What? I don't know what else to do. I'm sitting there. I'm surrounded by people that don't have any rank on their uniforms. Right. And I'm, you know, like I want to know what's going on. And then, you know, it devolved into a, a conversation where a kid was asking me what the best, you know, duty stations are. In the Air Force, and so like the, the, Man, the doc finally came out and called my name, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know, got to go by like K by K by by by." Yeah, so again, you're in a job interview, and just caveat emptor, right? Buyer beware. You are going into this thing, and you know specifically about this thing. I'll bet the person that's asking you for this information, I bet they know somebody. I bet they know somebody that's probably one of your supervisors or maybe an MTI or maybe an actual operator in the career field. And they're like, oh, you are going to be a PJ. That's interesting. Tell me more about everything that you're going to do. And uh, yeah. Can we can we talk about the people that aren't actually part of the career fields that either have worked with us or know uh, guys in our community that are like maybe more crazy about protecting our community than we are? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. They're they're so they're so happy to dime you out. Oh yeah. Um, well, for, weird. For, yeah. Well, and I will tell you a fun pipeline story. So there we are. We're in the pipeline, uh, and this is this is kind of like you never know who you're talking to, so you need to you need to be on your game. So there we are. Maybe having a couple drinks at the bar. We're all over twenty one. We're all in phase. Like nothing illegal was going on. And but get a couple of bowls of those loudmouth soups in you, and you start kind of talking reckless. So there may have been a student that was kind of talking about being a PJ and everything that he was going to do. And maybe he didn't make it clear that he was actually a student. And then maybe the bartender that was serving him was the wife of the commandant of the schoolhouse. And maybe that was one of the most ridiculous smoke sessions that ever happened. I'm just saying like, allegedly (laughs) it wasn't. And for the first time ever, this was not actually me and my team. So I just want to put that out there. Almost every pipeline story that I tell that I don't say who it was or, or put you in a time frame, It was us because worst team of all time. Um, but yeah, may, maybe just watch when you're talking about stuff and make sure you represent yourself well and make, make sure you represent your, your team well. And again, you never know who knows who. That's real. <laughs> That's real. it. Yeah. Every flight between Florida and Texas Everybody knows what you're talking about. Oh Every gosh, single yeah. one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I oh. hope 